Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for a bench press day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below, be greatly appreciated. So I decided to kind of see where my wider grip is today versus the closed grip last time, and I let that dictate the flow of my training today, because I came in and I said, if I can be a little stronger on the wide grip than the closed grip I just hit uh, last week, you know, a few days ago, um, I probably should keep hammering this wide grip stuff and my program today needs to be geared around it. So I had two different workouts in mind depending on upon um, how this lift went. But I got 320 and it looked a little grindy but it didn't feel bad. Like I know I could have gotten a little more. Now keep in mind my bench has regressed quite a bit. I know you guys have seen me bench 350 wider. You've seen me bench 365 close grip last year. I'm at a lighter body weight, uh, other stuff going on cruising right now. So, you know, I'll take this, but I will keep working on it. I will get my bench to 405. It's absolutely going to happen. Um, but considering a nice, good pause, uh, everything beautiful, everything meet legal on that lift, I'll take it. I'll take it as a solid training max. And I kind of assess that to see, see where did I feel it? Where did I feel the weak links? And I know that I need to keep hammering uh, my pecs and I need to do all this pause work. So I decided uh, to go back to my basics, what I had been doing for these workouts recently when I was doing more incline work and wider grip. Let's mess with some pull-ups, let's mess with some rows. So I decided to use my normal bar. Um, I didn't get the camera turners where you guys can see it. I'm considering flipping over to the fat bar and doing uh, fat bar barbell rows and fat bar pull-ups just to hammer my forearms and grip. I'm thinking about it. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do that or if I'm just gonna use the normal bars. Because, uh, you know, again, I do feel like my grip, since I've been doing all the stiff bar work, the grip feels a little almost concerning on the deadlifting, okay? And I don't want that to become a problem. So I may need to double down on that. But since I'm doing all the uh, assistance work with the, with the stiff bar, it may not be an issue. Uh, but as you guys can see, obviously these pull-ups, I'm a little weaker than the neutral grip. I can't do as many. Also, though, I take everything to the bottom and hold it. I'm pausing at the bottom, at the bottom of what my range of motion is, and it just is what it is. I'm not going to argue about it, not going to discuss it, explain it any further. Uh, just going to do it. Going to come in and train. Um, so people would say, why that type of pull-up? Why do that if it's a little bit harder? It's the easiest on the shoulders. Uh, the research kind of shows that. We know that a, a decent grip, like maybe shoulder width to a little bit wider, on overhand grip pull-up seems to be in the data that's looked at it biomechanically seems to probably be the safest for your shoulders over time and my issues in the past with pull-ups have been overuse and shoulder problems uh, but I'm hoping by dropping these into my full range of motion it will help with my mobility a little bit over time and it will let me eventually be able to overhead press again and actually maybe get to a longer range of motion I don't know that you know <laughs> I don't know uh, I'm just going to work with it and see. But I feel pull-ups really well. I get a great stimulus from them. Uh, all the benching was paused, by the way. Notice that. We're taking a pinkies on the rings. Everything paused at the bottom. And I'm pausing intentionally. It's like, uh, I almost need to quote him here, Jared Burton, who, who I have some interaction with online. Not a lot, just a little bit. He does follow my page, and he talked about that uh, on there the other day. And, and to put in perspective... Uh, he's 50 years old and benches over 500 pounds. Raw, paused, everything. Which is just insane. And he kind of kind of said that too. He goes, look, he goes, I've, he goes, anytime someone starts really pausing on all their bench work, their bench goes up. That's his opinion. Just his observation over the years. Um, you know, when a guy's 50 years old and, and can bench 500 plus, he must be doing a few things, right? Clearly, he's doing at least one or two things right. His programming and his ideas behind benching can't be too bad. I, th I think we can all agree with that. Uh, and, and I liked that someone like that came in and posted that. In fact, I love that someone at that level came in and posted that. Okay. It's fantastic. I appreciate it, brother. Incline. It's all paused. So why this particular setup? It gets the most pec involvement for me. Uh, both of these hammered my pecs. I felt my pecs extremely well on that pause benching today. Again, look at the wrist stacking, angles of the wrist stacking, which means we're getting the most tension at the bottom. And then by pausing, 
Now, when I do the incline like that, it's probably when I do those 30 degree inclines with a, a pinkies on the ring or anywhere in that region, I tend to feel more chest activation than just about any other lift I can think of. It's phenomenal. It's just that stretch it gives. I feel like I get a tremendous stretch in my whole upper chest. Okay? Whereas in the, the flat bench, I felt all through the middle, right through the whole middle of the chest, probably lower chest. But that upper chest stretch on these, that stretch and that pump it gives there, um, that's going to help me with my benching. Now, I want everyone to notice, what does all this do? This all makes you faster out of the bottom. And if I'm going to go a little wider, that's what I have to have. I need all this pressing work to make me stronger out of the bottom. Have to have it. Uh, of course, we also did just normal barbell rows. I started with a really close grip and took it out a little bit wider. I'm not going heavy on these. And, and that's one of the, the tricks to making these work because I can get real strong real fast on these rows if I do them fresh and I use any body English. I'm trying to stay strict on these and I did pull-ups first. Why? Uh, it makes my lats and biceps fatigue going into them. Therefore, I can't use as much weight as easily. So I'm not gonna beat up my low back as much. So if I wanna do those sort of rows, because really what's the idea? I don't wanna set up that stupid thing all the time. I wanna get these workouts done fast. I hate having sometimes to set up the seal rows as much as I love the seal row. And I, I can get through my workout quicker because I'm not moving that around. I just use my deadlift jack right there on my deadlift platform and I can just row. It's less setup time, okay? Let's me get it done quick. But the same thing, the incline pause work. Incline bench is one of the best lifts for getting you stronger right off the chest. Okay, so the main thing I'm looking at when I go wider at all, I've got to be able to fire off the chest. So we need the pecs, we need the front delts for that, especially the front delts. But all that gets hit, the pause work makes everything work harder uh, than the pause incline hits that. So then I finish the rest of the workout just supersetting JM presses with uh, barbell curls, right? And I'm doing these barbell curls real strict. We're doing these super, super strict. Can't use that much weight. But you know what? I need the bicep work, especially if I'm going to do everything overhand grip. A lot of times I've been doing a lot of hammer curls, but it's like... Mm, I'm getting full pronation on two different lifts right now, right? My forearms and everything are getting worked tremendously from that, radial brachialis, everything else. In certain side views when I've done curls, people realize how big my forearms are. They don't always look big at all angles. Uh, they've gotten big. They've gotten bigger. So I really do need that little bit of bicep work there. And I'm not saying I won't throw in some hammer curls or some other dumbbell curls from time to time, but I felt like today I just wanted to come in and keep it basic, a nice full range of motion strict barbell curl. Did five sets of them. And normally I wouldn't do this many sets of any of my lifts, but you're looking at the big movements involved. Uh, biceps might be getting a little neglected there. Right, it came in, just got a really good pump for the biceps. You know, it was only 65 pounds, but after doing all the pull-ups and stuff, all right, we're fatigued. So that just that pump work, getting up to 10 plus reps, because I think everything was 12. Uh, doing those 12 rep sets, just nice and strict, gave me a hell of a pump in my biceps, forearms, everything else. And again, gave me cushion for all these JM presses, right? We're keeping blood in that area, keeping everything pumped up. It makes the JM presses feel smoother. I ended up doing a lot of volume on those today because I'm like, let's come in and really hit these JM presses. Uh, and I'm not saying I don't like the other extensions and stuff I do. Sometimes the, the band press downs, the laying extensions, they're all good movements. They're good movements, but the JM press is definitely, if we want more tricep out of the bottom, I really like the JM press for that, for just getting explosive out of the bottom, being able to fire the triceps through the whole movement. Because again, I've come to realize if I can get it moving fast enough off the chest with a wider grip, I can lock it. But I've got to get that power off the chest. And so all of my supplemental work is geared towards that. With the advantage of this is a big tricep exercise, so it will help with lockout in theory. It will help. But I ended up doing six sets of it. I did six sets. Uh, again, my performance has come up on those, even though I haven't done them every workout. So I started doing them again. I'm getting better at them. And the fact that I sustained the strength for all six sets, I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep hammering. I think I want to hammer the JM presses just a little bit. Really push the volume and performance up on those. 
and uh, see how well that also carries over to everything. That will keep my closed grip really, really strong, even if I focus on lighter grip. Uh, all right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.